Hello, I want to talk to you today about a really interesting creative research method called cultural probes. And this was developed, um, I think, by William Gaver at Goldsmiths and colleagues around the turn of the century. And they are designers, design researchers, design academics. Um, the method has spread into the social sciences and beyond because it's very flexible uh, and creative and interesting for researchers and for participants to create and use. A probe means some kind of artefact that a research participant can interact with. So, for example, perhaps a postcard uh, with a particular picture and message on the front for the participant to respond to in a message on the back or a map with stickers for a participant to show where they've been or where they would like to go or where they habitually visit. Maybe a digital camera with prompts or prompts for a smartphone if participants have smartphones for taking pictures. Maybe a structured diary and a nice notebook. Probes tend to be quite attractive. Um, they're intended to be attractive, attractive to look at, to think about and perhaps to use. So the researchers first job here is to create these probes, to make a collection or a set of probes which you might present in a nice box or a gift bag or in some other way so that they look appealing. They look um, like something like a, maybe not quite like a gift, but like something enticing, something that someone might want to open and explore. I've expressed this as though all probes are hard copy or solid artifacts, but they can be digital or they can be a mix. There are various ways of doing this. I don't think we've found them all yet. And then when you've created your collections or sets, you present one to each participant and invite them to interact with whichever probes they wish, whenever they want and however they like. So it gives participants a lot of flexibility. They don't have to interact with every single thing you give them. And these sets or collections often contain eight or nine or 10 items. Um, there are no rules about numbers, but I think the idea is to give participants enough so that they've got a real choice about what they want to engage with. And then the probes are left with the participant for a period of time, and that's usually followed up with an interview, which can be in person or online. I don't think it would work too well as a telephone interview because you'd need to be able to see what participants have done with their probes or they might send them back to you first and then an interview. There are various ways of making this work. It's very flexible, which can be very, very helpful. But during the interview, you talk to participants about what they've, how they've responded to the probes, what they've done, what that means to them, why they chose those probes, why they responded in the way that they did, and so on. And in this way, participants contribute to the beginning part of your analytic work. They help to contribute to themes to categories through the information that they give you. There's still then a chunk of analytic work for researchers to do, and that can be challenging because of the diversity of the materials that you're likely to receive from your participants. On the plus side, though, this can yield really very rich data. And also, it's often fun for participants and for researchers using cultural probes. And I think this is part of their appeal because some research methods are so kind of po-faced and serious. And research doesn't always have to be serious, even if it's about a serious question or problem and you want to find a serious answer or solution. The process can still be fun. And using cultural probes is one way to help that to happen.